Our entrance song is from the hymnal we celebrate, number 550, We Three Kings 550, from hymnal we celebrate, the blue, the purple hymnal. We three kings of Orient bearing gifts we traverse afar, field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. Oh, star. Wonder star of night, star with royal beauty bright, who as what leading still proceeding guide us to the perfect light. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, we are offering this holy mass to pray for the repose of the soul of Les Uziel. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who through your only begotten Son have made us a new creation for yourself, grant, we pray, that by your grace we may be found in the likeness of him in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, we have this confidence in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in regard to whatever we ask, we know that what we have asked for is ours. If anyone sees his brother sinning, if the sin is not deadly, he should pray to God and he will give him life. This is only for those whose sin is not deadly. There is such a thing as deadly sin, about which I do not say that you should pray. All wrongdoing is sin, but there is sin that is not deadly. We know that anyone begotten by God does not sin, but the one begotten by God he protects, and the evil one cannot touch him. <clears throat> we know that we belong to God, and the whole world is under the power of the evil one. We also know that the Son of God has come and has given us discernment to know the one who is true. And we are in the one who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Children, be on your guard against idols. The word of the Lord. The Lord takes delight in his people. 
Sing to the Lord a new song of praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name in the festive dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord loves his people, and he adorns the lowly with victory. Let the faithful exalt in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. This is the glory of all his faithful. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. On those dwelling in the land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus and his disciples went into the region of Judea, where he spent some time with them baptizing. baptizing. John was also baptizing in Anon near Salim, because there was an abundance of water there, and people came to be baptized for John had not yet been imprisoned. Now a dispute arose between the disciples of John and a Jew about ceremonial washings. So they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, the one who was with you across the Jordan, to whom you testified, here he is baptizing and everyone is coming to him. John answered and said, No one can receive anything except what has been given from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I, had, that I said that I am not the Christ, but that I was sent before him. The one who has the bride is the bridegroom, the best man who stands and listens for him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. So this joy of mine has been made complete. He must increase, I must decrease. The Gospel of the Lord. We barely celebrated the Lord's birth, and tomorrow, or starting this evening, we are already about to celebrate the Lord's baptism as a grown man, as we heard in the gospel, after the baptism of John, he went around and baptizing others. And... Um, the Christmas season seems to be too short. Uh, we haven't get tired of uh, adoring the cute little baby Jesus, and now we have to face a grown man um, calling us to repentance. In fact, the church put the two celebrations near each other to, to teach us a very important message the baptism that John, a minister, administered was a baptism of repentance, calling 
the people back to God. But the baptism the Lord administered is a lot more than that. As we heard in the gospel today, the Lord was baptizing in the nearby uh, area uh, near John. And um, it is the, the message of new life. As we celebrate the Lord's birth, and then we quickly move on to celebrate his baptism, we look at and meditate upon our own birth. Uh, we celebrate birthday, but we should also celebrate our baptism, also a birthday. It is um, the life uh, given to us by our parents, but baptism is also a life given to us also normally by our parents. It is a spiritual life, the divine life, uh, which begins at baptism. A bishop left a will about his arrangement for the tombstone. He asked that his, the date of his baptism be etched on his tombstone in order to signify how important for him uh, that date was. The parents, we love children. We give them everything we have, uh, starting with giving them birth. But among all the wonderful things we give them afterwards, nothing greater than the gift of baptism, the new birth, the new life, because the baptism that the Lord administered is the re beginning of a new life as children of God, no longer under the shackles of the devil, but now be freed from original sin and numbered among the children of God. And this should be meditated every day in order to realize how important it is. As we respond it, the Lord takes delight in his people. And whose are his people? The baptized, his children. When we open our mouth, we speak to him, he enjoy it like little babies when they speak. We adore them. We mesmerize by whatever they utter. A lot of time, nonsense, but we really enjoy it. God, the same. He enjoys our speaking with him. Even our speech is so lousy, but he takes delight in his people. And so whatever we ask, he will listen attentively. As in the first reading, St. John mentioned that if we ask anything, he will hear us, especially what we ask according to his will. This is a privilege that only the baptized have. We are given all sorts of grace in order to lead a wonderful life, all starting at baptism. And so, today we prepare to celebrate the Lord's baptism. Let us reflect upon our own baptism. In order to understand more fully the privilege and the dignity we receive from God, can we imagine the Lord Jesus said about someone who was given earthly life, it's better for him not to be born. You remember that statement about Judas. It's wonderful to be given life, 
on earth. But if that life ends up in eternal damnation, then what good is that birth? Not every life will end up there. But so much better and so much more sure if that life is given a divine life at baptism is far greater guarantee. That life is promised to be a wonderful life if it is given the divine life with it at baptism. There's another statement so important about John the Baptist for us to understand the dignity that we have. The Lord said about John the Baptist, he's the greatest, but the smallest, the lowest one in the New Testament is greater than John, precisely because of our baptism, the Lord Jesus' baptism, that we are given what John only dreamed to have. That is the dignity of the children of God by baptism. John never had that from the Lord. He would be baptized in the blood later on by the hand of Herod. But we are the children of God. We are so privileged. We are so fortunate. And too many people kind of neglect that and forget that. They may come to church three times a year. When they are hatched, and then when they are matched, and when they are dispatched. So when they get baptized, when they were they're born, and then we get married, and when they come to church for a funeral of their own funeral. And so that is a tragedy given the great fortune we all receive at baptism, great potential, so many fruits of good work, of charity that would blossom later on from there. And yet negligence of baptism, negligence of the faith and the Christian way of life, all of those fruits, all of the potential would be gone. And so we are grateful to God for this gift of baptism and also grateful to our parents for having given us the greatest gift that they have given us. Let us celebrate, cherish, and live out our baptismal promises. Make good use of the graces that God gives to those who are baptized, in order to bear witness to him so that more people would come to be baptized and become God's children. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who give us the gift of true prayer and the peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in might and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today, you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations and when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, his spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace.
Let us pray. May your people, Lord, whom you guide and sustain in many ways, experience both now and in the future the remedies which you bestow, that with the needed solace of things that pass away, they may strive with ever deepened trust for things eternal through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince, heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Our closing hymn is from the same number, 550. We are singing the last verse, 550, verse 5. Glorious now, behold him arise, King and God and sacrifice. Heaven sings hallelujah, hallelujah, they fly. Star of night, star with royal beauty bright, where swords reading still proceeding, guide us to the perfect light.